All right, welcome back guys. So today we are going to do uh, pipelines is uh, the continuation of the previous session, which is, I think we talk about the categorical variable. How do we treat if we have a non uh, text or basically categories inside our data set, right? So there are three approach just to recap really quickly. Uh, the first ap approach is we just uh, very straightforward you just drop it you don't want to know about it just drop it right but um, sometimes it wouldn't uh, really work nicely because what if that uh, category is kind of important right the second approach which you want to convert that into a text oh sorry uh, um, from convert basically from text to numbers right because that's what how the computer reads the data so it's called label encoding basically, basically you uh, convert it into from zero to uh, let's say four if there are let's say five uh, categorical uh, rankings in order let's say from, uh, in terms of temperature you can say it's say from the hottest hot warm cold and coldest so there's zero to four um, and the last one it is the kind of more complicated one is called one hot encoding and it takes a lot of uh, basically a space because you need to dedicate um, uh, for every unique values in that category so for example we are talking about again temperature it has let's say five unique values which is the the hottest hot warm cold and coldest and we need to dedicate uh, five digits um, for that so for example, uh, if you want to one hot encode the uh, category of uh, hottest is gonna be, because hottest, let's say, this is hottest, uh, hot, warm, and cold, cold and coldest, then it's gonna be one, zero, 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 zero. So the only thing that's one is the one that's uh, uh, associated with that particular unique values, right? And the rest is gonna be zero, right? But you still need all the five digits to be kind of converted. Right? That's why it's called one hot encoding. So if you want to convert the, let's say, uh, how does hot, the warm one, the, the value is in the middle. So it's going to be zero, zero, one, zero, zero, right? So, um, so just to recap. And so right now we are going to talk about uh, pipelines um, and basically the way Kaggle um, uh, say about this is, is basically how to improve efficiency of our machine learning codes. So if you look uh, just quickly, uh, uh, pipeline, I think is a way to uh, streamline the uh, data pre-processing and uh, modeling uh, code. So it's just kind of like, you know, make it like simpler, right? So specifically a pipeline bundles uh, pre-processing. So I think it's gonna make it into like a mod, like a li kind of library. So instead of uh, running like three, three, three uh, kind of uh, command codes, you're gonna run just one command code, right? And then that, that one command code is gonna run this kind of function or this this uh, library, and then it's just gonna, from our point of view, it's kind of probably like uh, more trans, more straightforward, more like uh, intuitive. You don't have to think about the nitty gritty, the details although it's important to know what's going on behind the scene. Uh, the way I see it is, is just <clears throat> uh, to, to get all of the, uh, the burdens away uh, from the uh, data scientists, as a data scientist, of all those things that are kind of like um, the details that just keep on repeating, right? You can automate those things, right? Uh, so it says uh, bundling processing and modeling steps, so you can use the whole bundle as if it were a single step, right? So it will just basically, I'm um, just gonna uh, make it long, bigger. So many uh, data scientists hack together models without pipelines, but pipelines have some important benefits. So it's cleaner code, right? Um, fewer bugs because, well, you don't forget some of the uh, steps because there are so many steps that you have to like taken care of, like. If you want to do hot, hot one or hot encode before you can even do that, you have to uh, investigate. You have to drop. I think the um, some of the uh, uh, the uh, the column that has some missing target. You have to drop the. I think the one has missing values. You have to drop uh, um, and then you have to investigate the cardinal cardinal cardinality, right? Uh, because you don't want to in, include 
all of the uh, uh, the unique, uh, especially those features that has uh, a big number of unique values because those kind of like not efficient. So you have to do all of those pre-processing stuff, right? So with uh, pipelines, you kind of like streamline it. Um, easier to uh, productionize, so uh, it can be surprising hard to transition a model from a prototype to something deployable at scale. We won't go into many, okay. And more options for model validation. So for example, um, over here, um, the same thing is uh, we take the uh, Melbourne housing data set, um, uh, we print out the extra.hat, and then uh, we construct the full pipeline in three steps. So um, you define your pre-processing steps. Uh, so similar to how a pipeline bundles together pre-processing and modeling stuff, we use column uh, transformer class to bundle together different pre-processing steps, the code below. So uh, it's impute missing values. So it will take care of the uh, missing values. Uh, uh, input missing values and applies a one hot encoding to categorical um, uh, data so this is how you do it you import the uh, column transformer because you want to transform all the uh, the columns right the one that has the categorical is the is the uh, the features which is the, the column and then you import the pipeline um, and after that, you import a simple imputer, one hand encoder, and then you pre process the uh, numerical data. So you uh, call the uh, simple imputer strategy constant, um, and then um, you pre process the uh, now the uh, categorical data. So you call uh, the uh, pipeline here, and then you define all the steps that you uh, kind of want. So you put imputer, you put uh, the uh, algorithm that you're gonna use to convert those uh, categories with one hundred encoding, and then uh, you want, and then after that you bundle pre-processing for both. So you um uh, uh kind of i think this is the way combined so col column transformer you combine the uh, the numerical columns and the categorical um uh, columns the categorical transformer right so which you get it from oops which you get it from here right so it, yeah and then you define the model. This is the model that you you are um, that you are choosing uh, to, uh, to basically uh, train the model. So you're using a random forest regressor, um, you put it in a pointer called model, and then you define the uh, the parameters, um, uh, make it um, reprodu reprodu reproducible. Um, and then you create and evaluate the pipeline. So you, so that's just uh, defining it here, and then you create. So uh, we use the pipeline class to define a pipeline that bundles the pre-processing and modeling steps. And uh, there are a few important things to notice with the pipeline. We pre-process the training data and fit the model in a single line of code. So this is very important. This is very um, straightforward. In contrast, without the pipeline, we have to do imputation, right? So one hot encoding and model uh, training in uh, separate steps, right? So this becomes easily, especially messy if you have to deal with both numerical and categorical uh, variable. Okay. Um, with the pipeline, we supply the unprocessed features in uh, X validation to predict command, and the pipeline automatically pre-process the features before generating predictions. 
However, without FAMA, we have to remember the, to pre-process the validation data before making predictions. Okay. So um, over here, we, they are basically uh, uh, importing the mean absolute error, um, bundle pre-processing and modeling code in a pipeline. So over here, uh, calling the pipeline again, calling my pipeline. Um, the pipeline is uh, okay. So it's an it's a it's a it's a library, uh, or is yeah I think it's a library. And then pre-process of training data. So you call that, okay, and then you train it. You train that one, okay. Um, and then you uh, use it for to predict. Um, using my pipeline. Remember my pipeline consists of a pipeline with a, a parameters of um, preprocessor. Uh, preprocessor is uh, about bundling together or preprocessing the uh, um, the uh, the numerical and the categorical because you need to in the numerical, you have to, uh, what do you call that? Um, impute. Uh, in the categorical, you have to impute and one hot encode, one hot encoding, right? Simple imputer is, um, I forget, what is a simple imputer? I think it's, it says here, let me see. Imputation. I think that's um, dropping the unnecessary uh, okay so it's the assignment of value of something by inference so here if you look at the let's say Thing. Um, is it missing values? Um, I think it's missing values. That's imputation, I think. Oh well. Uh, oh, okay. So it's it's um, you're filling the missing value with some number. Okay, so NAN with two. Over here is with the mean value. Okay. Yeah, so that's what the imputation is, right? So, yeah, simple imputer to replace missing values with the mean value. Okay, if it's a mean, you can uh, use mod, you can use, I think, median, uh, different ways, right? Okay, cool. So we got that, right? Um, where, where are we? Um, we are here on the pipeline. Yeah, okay. So, um, okay. So over here, okay. So we, we did the um, pre-processing and modeling over here, and then we train it. Uh, so it's called my pipeline basically. Uh, and then we use the, uh, the model, which is my pipeline. Um, uh, hold on, where is the, the model is random rest. Okay. Got it, got it. Pipeline. Pipeline. I'm still not sure what pipeline does. 
it's basically um, so it's basically bundling the pre-processing and also um, um, is is basically the uh, the model over here the way I see it. Okay, and it's called a mean absolute value. Okay, so we, we're just gonna do exercise here. Okay, so uh, this is exercise for pipeline. I'm gonna, just gonna run this. Okay, complete. Um, this is just the usual stuff. Uh, so we're importing the binder. Is is for um, I think the uh, uh, the the checking whether it's correct or not, right? Um, the same thing as this. I think is um, checking whether uh, the setup is complete or not. Um, um, okay, so importing the pandas here, uh, importing the, the train uh, task split, blah, blah, blah. We're just doing basically the, the same stuff here. Um, we are, um, so we're removing rows with missing target. Okay, so we still have to do this, basically. It's not automatic. Uh, we're putting the uh, Y, uh, uh, the cell press into Y, and then we drop the uh, the cell press. Okay, the standard procedures, and then after we after that we break it down into training and uh, validation for for uh, 80 and uh, to 20 percent. Right? Okay, cool. Let's do that. We're gonna print the extra full shape. Uh, with, just to be curious, is 1168 uh, columns and 79 features. Um, okay, so, and then the next one is cardinality. Cardinality means the number of unique values in columns. Select categorical column with relatively low cardinality, convenient but arbitrary. Okay, categorical columns. Okay, so you, we are defining uh, less than 10 uh, and it has to be uh, categorical, right? So we are just gonna put whatever uh, category that has less than 10 uh, into this uh, kind of pointer, right? And then the numerical column is has to be all of the numerical columns uh, that has uh, numeric, has this type of uh, uh, data. Um, and uh, putting the name over there. Okay, so uh, the selected column would be my column, which is a uh, combination of categorical and numerical. Um, I think this is kind of the same as that one. Um, and then after that, uh, the uh, training of X is the um, the X train full, the full. Because if you can, I could say, x train full shape. Oh no, read hat. What am I doing? Hat. So those are the things. Um, and then we can actually. Um, do the X train. Let me see X train. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy this. Okay, and then I'm just gonna run this shape. Uh, 76. So it's less three. So there are three features that are being dropped, right? Um, I think that's part of it because of the uh the cardinality. The one that has more than ten, I think, has. It has um, kind of uh, three feature, three co uh, columns, right? Um, you can actually make a quick, quick check, um, but I don't want to do that. Uh, you can you can just make a quick check um, with this. You can copy and paste. Um, well, this is this is the number of category column, right? And then um, you can check really quickly the one that has um, 
so that's uh, less than 10 the one that has more and equals than 10 we call it uh, just 10 like that just more right and then we run it oh actually I already put it over there so I'm just gonna erase this uh, and then just gonna print it out so it has three so that's correct right so that's why over here it's only 76 right while the uh, uh, the extra inch ship is only 76 uh, uh, features while the original one extra in full is 79 columns right so we are dropping three columns that has more than 10 uh, cardinality unique values which is neighborhood exterior first and exterior second okay that's good done with that now we come uh, here comes the fun part the one that's the new one the one that's supposed to be only just using one uh, one's very straightforward just one type one one code one line of code instead of three line of codes so we are import importing the uh, the column transformer right um, the pipeline itself uh, the simple imputer algorithm uh, the one hot encoder algorithm and then the algorithm of random forest basically the, the model itself and then the matrix uh, how to know how good you are from the uh, uh, the, the prediction as compared to the real uh, uh, sales price right so um, simple computer you call it uh, with the strategy constant I'm not sure about that but yeah about these parameters say you can call it a numerical uh, transformer this is for uh, pre-processing pre-processing the numerical data um, which has to do with um, replacing basically imputer means replacing the uh, not a number not an end with with something else with 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 a number like with with mean with mod with median right um, and then the the pipeline uh, consists of um first the imputer itself which is the um uh the simple imputer the one that we just uh call okay but we are using uh, oh i think i know i think i know the, so the strategy strategy here is constant i think it's just going to replace it with the constant value i'm not sure what constant or constant value is to replace probably it's kind of a I don't know probably I don't know could, could be the mean and then we'll just replace it with all means right so it's constant it's just the same well for the uh, categorical uh, transformer how do we handle the uh, not a number uh, in uh, under uh, um, categorical data is using most frequent so it's is uh, mode right so we have mean which is the average median which is the 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 one is like, like really in the middle and then the mode which is the most frequent right and then how do we handle the um, 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 transforming it like using label encoder so we are using here one hot encoder uh, handle unknown is ignore and then uh, we bundle uh, pre-processing for numerical and categorical so we call a column transformer that's how we bundle it together and then underscore this is how they um, just naming it so you bundle the numerical transformer here right and then the categorical transformer and then boom done and it's being called as a pre-process right so basically this is to pre-process -pre all the column uh, what to process basically uh, we need to separate between numerical and uh, categor categorical column the numerical we just have to impute that means replace all the not a number with something else with a number could be mode median or uh, average or something like that uh, and the categorical um, um, uh, column we're gonna do the imputing uh, in this case we're gonna use the strategy of using the most frequent which is the mode and then after that we're gonna convert that um, category or convert that text into um, a number using one hot encoding right so i hope that's clear for you guys um, 
this is basically it's kind of the same as the last one it's just more kind of straightforward you don't have to like think all of this like small small details right so it's kind of easier to kind of to follow and save our brain cells right our precious brain cells right uh, so and then we are defining the model so we are uh, choosing random forest regressor and we are just putting the parameters and uh, estimator is 100 and uh, make sure it is re reproducible um, and then uh, you uh, just um, bundle the uh, pre-processing and modeling together in a pipeline so I know why they call it a pipeline because you know a pipe you can put stuff inside a pipe right and this is a pipeline so there's many like they put like the pre-processing they put um, which is the the, the, the the imputer they put the algorithm the model algorithm and then what else they put they put the um, yeah so and then so it's called a pipeline yeah so uh, I would call it a different term but um, probably some of you wouldn't agree it's called it like a library because library basically is just a bunch of functions put together kind of but the difference between library and a pipeline library is just means okay so there in inside library there's a bunch of functions that you can call let's say there's function, function a b c d e so you can call function a a function b function c and then the library is called let's say uh library z right uh well pipeline is basically when you call the pipeline it will it will uh basically execute all of those uh library uh consecutively in in a cons uh, uh all of them and in a constitutive manner but uh, a library you can just choose um, when you call that library you have to specify what uh, functions you want to activate and it's only I think it's just one uh, right so that's a different so I think pipeline is more kind of like a library on steroid kind of because it's, a, it's, it's kind of like automated or executable automated uh, library Okay, so now I know I got a new term for that. That's what pipeline is all about. It's about an automated library uh, with, with all of the, um, uh, the the sequence of steps already uh, in place. And so once you call that library, or once you call that pipeline, it's automatically executed one by one. Boom, 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 done, right? And it gives you an output. So it's it's like a, you can call it, it's like a, it's like a big functions. And within that function, there's a, uh, mini function inside it right so I got this it's just a different naming all of these things just to confuse you you know just giving this pipeline machine learning whatever but it's all it means just like very simple it's just it's just uh, basically uh, creating math mathematical function that's what all, all machine learning is and that's what uh, deep learning is uh, creating a, a mathematical function but it's a very complex mathematical function that has probably a million or even a billion uh, uh, variables that's how complex it is right uh, but that's all to it yeah, so if you understand the, the 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 essence the basic they're all kind of the same it's just all of this uh, jargon right that it makes it like confusing oh pipeline was machine learning uh, uh, imputer uh, transformer whatever you right anyway um that's just a slightly off tangent uh so we are going to continue so we are just putting um everything here into the pipeline right so first we want to pre-process right so by calling preprocessor and remember preprocessor is basically transferring all of the uh uh the column transforming all of the column whether it's numerical or categorical right and then after you transfer after you pre-process that now it's ready is a prime time to be uh, put it into the machine learning model so the next step is to put it into the model right so that's where this model here and it's already being specified that the model is being used is this one random forest uh, regressor right so how do you train it? So uh, basically you train it, you just call the CLF. Uh, I don't know what CLF stands for, but, but basically this is it, right? Uh, I don't know. So basically the same thing, fit uh, using 
uh, what what you put here is the basically the the training, right? For the tr because it is for training, for creating the algorithm. So uh, you put the X train and the Y train, not the validation, right? Correct, because we are still creating the mathematical function. So remember when you hear the word fit means the word training. Fit is the same as training. It means it's also the same word as uh, creating a mathematical function, which means you want to know uh, what are the variables, right? So if you want to uh, have a mathematical function, let's say a uh, simple one, let's say y equals to ax plus uh, bc, right? So you want to know what is a, what is uh, b, sorry, ax plus by, right? So you want to know a or you want b. So when you, when you do the fit, when you do the training, you are basically trying to find these parameters, the A and the B. So you can get a mathematical function instead of Y equals to AX plus B, Y is going to be like Y equals to 10X plus 3Y, for example. So finding the 10 and the 3, that's what the training is all about, right? Um, that's it. Um, and then after you, uh, you do the training, uh, so now you have the mathematical function y equals to let's say 10x plus 3y and then you can use that mathematical function right which is in CLF because you already trained it and then you call this algorithm called predict which is uh, basically uh, an algorithm that takes the uh, 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 the value of the x again um, and uh, it's gonna it's gonna throw out the, the output, the, the Y, basically. That's what it is, right? So you call this guy, and it's, it's basically it's telling the the, uh, 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 the program, hey, I have this uh, data set, uh, and it's, you have to use the validation, right? Uh, I'm gonna put all of this, uh, the validation data into the mathematical function, and then somehow compute the Y, right? Because you have already the, you have y is equals to let's say 10x plus 3y, right? And then you have all the x, right? So you know the x. So y equals to 10x plus 3y. Um, um, wait, I'm so I'm confused. Now. Yeah. So you, now all you have to do just predict the y, right? You have the x. All you have to do just compute the y. So now all the 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 y. Uh, it's going to be inside the, the pointer uh, of, of breadth, right? And then after that, you want to compute how good it is, your prediction. So you call this algorithm that's compute the difference in terms of mean absolute error between two numbers. Uh, what two numbers is basically the the prediction that you just compute, which is in, inside the breadth, and the Y validation, right? So that's it. See how simple it is if you um, kind of remember the last time we did is kind of like more complicated. There's so many like lines of uh, code, right? This is kind of like more clean. So I'm going to run this and we should be able to see the main absolute error. Let's see. Okay, so we have uh, 17,861, right? uh numerical transformer i don't know why is that oh this is just uh, a placeholder for uh, uh for the simple imputer algorithm right so uh, and this is kind of the uh the homework so we have this right uh next step we're gonna try to improve the performance this is kind of the homework um so in the code cell below define your own pre-processing steps and a random forest model fill in values for the following variables so you have to fill in the values of numerical transformer uh, categorical transformer and the model to pass this part of the exercise you need only define valid processing steps and a random forest model so uh, what numerical transformer should i put there i can put for example um, i'm just gonna got the idea from the top here right 
so I'm just going to put this one simple imputer strategy constant you can you can cheat kind of uh, from here from the uh, the theory over here what's the strategy um, strategy constant and then the strategy constant is the same strategy I don't know what's the difference we're using the same strategy okay so it's fine and then uh, for categorical uh, transformer um, can we let's see what what is this being used uh, I'm just gonna use this one probably um see critical transformer using imputer strategy most frequent uh one hot encoder where's one hot encoder do we um oh okay let's yeah we did import that yeah and then after that um and then you bundle it so you create a, a placeholder called preprocessor uh, basically the same as that one and then you define the model it's basically the same thing here I don't know why it's, it's kind of very simple right define the model there that's it and that's it correct you can you can use a different thing here let's say one whatever um, let's see what's the hint well there are many different potential solutions you would it just by changing only column transformer for the default value especially we change the strategy parameter that is at how missing values are impure right? yeah Okay, so you can change, for example, um, um, uh, okay, is there a, oh, uh, um, I don't know. Um, simple imputer strategy let's say simple imputer strategy strategy okay. what other strategy you have you can look here okay okay so there's this thing Okay, so we can use, let's say, min. You want to use min? Okay, let's use min. How about that? Right, just use min. Okay. Um, yeah, and then just compute. Okay. It's still correct. Okay. Let's see the solution. Um, handle unknown is ignore it's the same thing basically just copy and paste simple as that um, run the code cell so part B run the code cell below uh, without changes so to pass this step you need to have uh, define a pipeline in part A uh, which we did right so we already defined the pipeline here um, um, the pre-processing basically uh, and then that achieve lower MA that the code. You are encouraged to take your time here and try out many different approaches to see how low can you get if your code does not pass the semantic version of steps and modeling part. Okay. So this is basically just seeing the uh okay. So we can run this, uh, see how it goes. Oh, 17,303. It's improving. Cool. 
How cool is that? You just change the strategy from uh, constant to mean. Right? This is 7,861. Okay, it works. Um, uh, you can change to, let's say, um, what other strategy? Uh, median, median, median. Let's say we change it to median. Uh, how, how low or how high can it get? Um, let's say median. 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 Okay. Numerical transformer. Okay, I'm gonna, just going to run this again. Boom. 17,135. Oh, wow. It's even lower. That's cool. I like this. Huh. Okay. Preprocessor. Um earlier it was constant, right? Let's say if I change the constant. Will it be the same? It should be the same. If it's not the same then I'm freaking out. Okay. Oh, it's not the same. That's weird. That's really weird. Huh. Hmm. I don't get this. Yeah, I don't know what's happening here. Okay. So now generate a uh, test prediction. Um, yeah, it's just copying this one. I'm just gonna copy the whole thing, probably. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Oh, this is test prediction, okay. What is this hint? Please see a hint from part to get some how that is in the first instance. Okay, yeah, that's that. And use the train model to generate the prediction with the test data. Um, ooh, okay. Um, pre processing of test data. How do you do that? Like, uh, reprocessing of test data. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need to cheat. So I need to go to the previous uh, courses. Let me see. How do you do that? Um, intermediate. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, this one. OK. Um, uh, categorical variable. Yeah, I think this one. I'm just going to open another kernel, the, the kernel that I just did. Um, let's see how it works. Uh, I kind of forget how to do it. This thing I have to do it like every day to really get into my head. Like the, the, all the, the command lines, like um, it's kind of easy. It's not, uh, it's hard to, if I just do it like once a week or so. Um, okay. Let's just go down. 
Um, okay, so model predict. Okay, got it. So um, the model is called CLF, right? And then uh, predict. So, no, sorry. Predict. And then um, I think X test. Is it X test? Let's see. Nope. Um, is not X test? Then what is it? I think you have to pre process it again. Yeah. You have to pre process the test data. Yeah. And fit model. So you have to go through this thing. Um, do I have to go to do this thing? My pipeline. Oh, my pipeline. Oh, it's not CLF. I'm kind of confused here. Oh, no. It's not CLF. CLF is this guy. Okay. Yeah. That's CLF. This is called. Um, this is called my pipeline. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. I think wait did, 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 did. I think it's my pipeline yeah. My pipeline. Yep. Um I get no um what's the name of the test um x test here x test x test Yeah, it's correct. X test. Um, you just have to. Um, yeah, I don't know why it doesn't work. Hmm. I don't know why it doesn't work. It's supposed to work. Um, what does it say here? Ah, uh, this sol solution. Yeah, there you go. That's the answer. My pipeline dot predict access, but it doesn't want to work. Huh, should I, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna run the code one more time. I'm just gonna um, restart everything, <laughs> see if it's work, okay? It's supposed to work. It's supposed to work, it's supposed to work, my dear, okay. Run this one. 
run this one just to check and then uh, we are doing the pop plan thing um, not yet actually it's just uh, pre-processing it's, it's just a pre pre-processing even before the, uh, the pre-processing which is basically dropping the um, um, uh, dropping some of the column, uh, check the categorical column, and so on. Um, okay, this is the pre-processing part. Okay. Okay. Seventeen eight thousand eight hundred sixty-one, and we're gonna improve the performance right now by just changing the strategy. Uh, basically, it's the same now. I have no idea why is it going to be, I think it's going to be different here. Boom. Let's see. See? It's different, man. I don't know why. Why Fallit and Pretz? Huh. That is so weird. I have no idea why is it different. Anybody knows the answer of that? Why is it different? Because it's exactly the same. I put the strategy constant. I put the strategy uh, for the imputer. For the numerical imputer is constant. For the um, imputer for the categorical is most frequent. And then still ignore for the handle unknown as uh, one hot encoder. But it gives me a different. Oh, probably the random state is different. Ah, that is that is that the reason? Ah, okay, because it's the same, right? Constant and most frequent. Okay, I'm gonna change random state to zero then. Let's see, zero. Okay, zero. Rerun it again and then run this again. See if it's the same now. Ah. Oh! Yes, it's the same. Okay, now I'm gonna change the. Um, so it makes a difference. This is why uh, reproduci reproducibility is so important. Got it. Got it. <sighs> and then, um, okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna go up again. I'm just gonna create, uh, change the strategy into, uh, let's say, min. Right? That's it. That's the only thing that I'm uh, changing. For the numerical um, uh, uh, values, uh, numerical impute, imputer, imputation, and then let's see if it's improving or improving a little bit. 648. Okay. Now I'm going to change it to uh, the median value. Median. Right. And then run that one again. Let's see. Boom, boom. Oh, improving again. Okay, I'm good with that. So I'm just going to take that and then I'm just going to do the, do the, uh, this one. And it doesn't work. It says, um, here, if I scroll down, um, I, I think it has to do with all of this. Is it expected to the array? Got scholar array instead. Whatever. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm not sure what it means. I'm not sure what it means. Kaggle, what's the matter with this? Why is the, the data. Is there something wrong that I did? But. Um, Oh, reshape your data either using array reshape if your data has a single feature or array reshape if it contains a single sample. Huh? What? Okay, I'm going to check just just for the sake of it. The X test, okay? Um, shape. I'm just going to check the shape of the X test has no really what 
How can it be? Are you kidding me? What? What? But I got it correct here. So I don't know why the solution is that one. See, my pipeline predict X does. Um, uh, I'm just going to copy this. I don't know. I cannot think anymore. What's wrong with that? I have no idea. It's the same to me. It's the same to me. Oh, what? Hmm. Wait, 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 wait. What's wrong with this? You cannot get the X test? Oh, X test full. Oh. Oh. Oh, is this this one? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. What? I'm confused now. Next test full. Is it like that? Oh, that's it. Okay. And then, is that the one? Okay, let me, okay, let me, let me just do this. Okay. So this is the one. Okay, what if I do shape? Okay. 79, okay, that's correct. Um, okay, that's cool. This is the one that's wrong, the solution, right? It's supposed to be accessful. Use the pub line in my pub line and the predict method. Because this is just just giving you the full, yeah. There's no excess. Over here, let me check. Um, well, okay, whatever. I think, let me see this. Um, yeah, this is X test. Okay. That's why it's so confusing. Okay. Naming people, naming is from the input test.csv. Okay. This is from the input test.csv. Okay. Uh, and then this one is for dot dot. Okay. The same, right? Input slash. Yeah, the same. The same thing. It's just, there's full here. Full. Okay, that's the reason. Okay, now I'm going to submit my result. Boom. What? Cannot again. Oh, okay. X test full. I think that's the one. Boom. I have no idea. Why is it doing like this again? Um, I have no idea why is that. Okay, so that's that's already submitting. I now have to um, commit it. I think right, right, correct. I think I'll just have to commit that. Committing. Um, so this is, uh, by the way, this is uh, a way to submit your, uh, if you're competing with Kaggle, you know, this is a way to submit it. Um, so take note of this. It's looks simple, but if you cannot do it, you cannot do it, right? So, so you wait until it's completed and then you kind of uh, copy and paste this thing, right? 
oh and then you just click this open version here so it will bring you to a website that has your uh, submission score and then you can see your score over there and then you can see your ranking too um, so you can see the the HTML file all of the things that you did right the steps that you've taken um, right um, until all of this deeper created thing um, everything basically and then you go here output that thing go to the output and then you can see this is the submission that you've taken the, that you took basically this is basically the your uh the output from your uh prediction from your test data set right and if you want to know your um so you click this one submit the competition boom wait a little bit a few seconds uh, it's done not yet so it says with completed and give you the um, submitted just now with time zero seconds score is 16,459 I think this one has to do with the MAE squared I think I'm not sure let's see is that the same uh, I kind of forgot already Oh no, it's different. It's different. Our MA is 70,553, but our submission score is 16,459.13640. And then you can look um, how good you are in terms of the competitor. So this is like rank number one. He has like 11,000 scores. So the, the lowest the score, I think, is the, the better, it's supposed to be, right? And then you can see, uh, click this one, jump to your position, the leaderboard, and it turns out I'm ranking 2,605, which is cool. So I was like improving from the last time. It says here I advanced 798 places on the leaderboard. Your submission score 16, which is an improvement of previous score 16,600. Cool. Hmm. Okay, so that's all about it, folks. Um, it's about pipeline, basically about streamlining, about all of the pre-processing and the modeling of the uh, algorithm into like one simple kind of uh, line of code, right? That's what it's all about. All right, uh, uh, leave a comment, give thumbs up if you like it. Uh, if you don't like it, please do not give thumbs down if you can. You know, just give like a shootout, like uh, what can be improved. That will be uh, a much better uh, positive criticism instead of just thumbs down because if you just give thumbs down, I do not know what I'm doing. Uh, I can improve, right? So with that, I'll see you next time.